from a company called Red Badger here in London. We are a consultancy company that works for big clients such as Tesco and uh, some big banks. And we really love new technology, including serverless, serverless framework. We believe it's the next big thing, and that's why we dug really deep into the serverless framework early on this year. And I would like to share with you our journey of building serverless framework plugins, why we did it, and how you can do it yourself, because it's actually really simple. To begin with, I would like to um, just run over what serverless framework does. Um, how many people have used serverless framework here? Awesome, so majority knows how it works. Um, basically, you have a config for your functions. You can deploy them easily using um, command line. At the moment, you can deploy to AWS, but as we heard early on today, uh, soon we will be able to deploy anywhere, um, pretty much. So what's the problem? Or like, why on earth would you ever want to write a serverless framework plugin, right? Like, why can't I just go and request a feature or something like that? Well, it's actually really fast to write your own thing. And um, back in June, July, hmm. Back in June or July um, at Red Badger, we decided to go for version one of serverless framework, although it was just in alpha. And um, that's because we're sort of like bleeding edge company and we just like, like the challenges of very unstable environments. And we needed to um, like do some of our own work, right? So like, for example, there were other plugins that were really great for version 0.5, such as the Webpack plugin, but it wasn't yet ready for version one. Another problem was that in version one, some of the features weren't yet ready and we really loved some of them, such as run function locally. So we decided to do our own so open source and publish those plugins or upgrade and contribute to the open source that was already available. Um, one of the reasons why we love open source is because it makes it extremely easy to learn from others. So it was easy for us to learn from how the original Webpack plugin was done. It was really easy to read through the 0.5 version of serverless framework. And what's more, um, I spent quite a lot of time reading through the code base of version one because it really helped me understand how the framework works and how I can extend it. So this is the diagram or how I think it works. I hope it's, it's right. Uh, if not, please, uh, those guys who actually coded this, let me know. Um, but basically serverless itself is just like a really thin platform that you can plug in things to. And these plugins are actually the commands such as deploy, create, invoke, there are plenty more. And then you have the actual implementation layer. So at the moment that's AWS, but you can obviously extend it with your own implementation. The interesting thing about commands is that they are not really implementation at all. They are just like some sort of a template that tells you what it should do, or what sort of steps you need to take in order to create or invoke or deploy, deploy a function. So for example, the deploy template or lifecycle events would be compile functions, um, zip it up, upload it, um, then deploy it to whatever service, which kind of applies to every provider, right? Like no matter which provider you use, you still want to upload it to the cloud, potentially compile it first, etc. You can skip any of those steps or you can use them, you can actually extend those steps. So it's an incredibly flexible framework. So you, there are potentially three ways you can extend serverless. One is write your own implementation, which I believe some people are doing for OpenWhisk and um, for other providers. Uh, but we aren't just like that crazy. We're, we're crazy, but not just that much. So we decided instead to use the current implementation of AWS deployment and extend it with, uh, with our own compilation or just create a new command. So first of all, I would like to talk about extending existing features, which uh, in our case was writing or upgrading the Webpack plugin. And um, it's kind of important to say at this point that although we did contribute to it, it has been changed about 10 times in the last two months because serverless framework is developing really rapidly. So probably the code that you see here, you wouldn't see in the repository, but it was an important learning step for us because um, it allowed us to understand just how you hook into 
a serverless framework. And it's actually incredibly simple. This is all you need to do to hook into whatever is going on in serverless framework. So it's 10 lines of code. That, that's quite simple, right? And very straightforward. Um, so the important bit is the hooks, uh, where you specify which function to run and when. And you can see that there is before. You can say that it, it should be run before or after a certain step in the uh, lifecycle event. Or you, know, you, you can actually even replace it or like extend the current uh, lifecycle step. And you say exactly which step and which command that relates to. And you can extend this way anything, anything you like, anything that is already there. Um, there are two more things here. There is the serverless and options object. Options object just gives you the flags that you invoked the command with in the CLI. So that's useful later on if you want to say, let's say, which functions you want to deploy if it's just one, where you'd find the, um, I don't know, webpack config, whatever, whatever you may need. And serverless is like this giant object of everything. There is everything that serverless knows about your deployment, about, I don't know, paths in your system, about variables. It even has this like sort of like nice little logger that helps you uh, print nicely colored things into your CLI. So that's everything there. The only problem with that is that there is everything there. So it's really <laughs> difficult to figure out where you actually find the things that you need. Um, I believe they are planning to slightly change this so that it's more straightforward and simple. So as you might expect, extending existing features, extending somebody else's code is a little bit difficult, although it's quite straightforward in terms of writing the code itself, figuring out which steps you actually want to hook into, figuring out where to find the information from the serverless object was quite hard four months ago. But as Florian mentioned early on, uh, t early on today, they are working so hard on documentation. And right now, the documentation for plugins is so nicely extended that you literally have a list of the hooks that you really want in most cases and stuff like that. So if you want to develop your own plugins, it should be literally just a matter of reading one or two things, uh, one or two pages in their wiki, and, and that's it. You're good to go. Um, but the main thing that I did was writing a new command. And actually, that's much simpler, because you don't have to really figure out what the un inputs, outputs are. You just like do your own thing. So that was cool. Um, I wrote it because uh, the community seemed kind of unhappy that we lost the ability to run function locally in version 1. And it's just like a super simple implementation. I know Florian mentioned earlier today that you know we can run only JavaScript natively. We would need containers to be able to run Python and whatnot. Um, so I didn't do that. I just I just did the JavaScript one, and um, that's a simple one as well. Again, even defining a new command is very simple. It's just a matter of saying this dot commands, and then you can define your commands there. Um, as you can see, I ran out of interesting names very quickly. So it's uh, command run, which is lifecycle event run, and then you run the function run. So <laughs> that wasn't such a great job there. But it basically sums up uh, what you do. You have a command over there with the name. You say uh, how you use it, uh, which is for the help. And then you have uh, a list of lifecycle events that you want to define for this command. At this step, again, we are not defining how exactly these steps should be uh, implemented. We just say these are the steps that you probably want to take in order to uh, <coughs> do this command. And then we have, again, a hook for the particular command. One more thing, and that's kind of the important one, is that you can also specify options for your command, which is important. So like when you want to run a function, you also need to say which function to run. And again, you just say that these are the options, these are the required options, there are some shortcuts. Again, extremely, extremely simple to write your own stuff. The only tricky bit then is writing the actual implementation, which is you know like taking the serverless objects, object, trying to understand what data is where. But that's kind of like normal JavaScript programming, or any programming for that matter. You just like need to figure a way around it, but it's quite simple. And what is really cool about writing 
I guess, deployment this way is that it's fully unit testable. All the plugins that we wrote are TDD, which means that you exactly know what is happening there. You can unit test it, you can make sure that for given input you're always getting the right output. And that is a huge uh, advantage in infrastructure. If you can actually test it, you can reproduce it, no matter where you deploy it, that, that's fantastic. Last but not least, um, there's the integration. Again, it's wonderfully simple. You just add it to your serverless YAML file stating which node module you want to run as a plugin. And apparently, soon you will be able to run it even without installing it publicly. You will be just able to stick it into a folder in your, uh, in your serverless folder, and that will be it. So to sum it up, it's pretty exciting. We have great tools to do serverless. Um, serverless framework is rapidly evolving and it seems that we can contribute to that a lot. Not just by contributing to serverless framework itself, but just extending the ecosystem and maybe not just requesting a feature when you need one, but just thinking, okay, so maybe this is really simple. Maybe I can just like write this particular extension I need and put it out there. Serverless framework has amazing list of all the plugins available at the moment, and I'm sure that they would be happy to list yours there as well. So I find that like a really nice way to do open source because it's not just about contributing to one code base, it's splitting it off into like sort of like atomic pieces that you can piece together the way you need them. And that way it's much easier to contribute because suddenly you don't have to deal with other people telling you how to write your code. You just write your own plugin and, and use it yourself. And that's it from me. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, you can ask me now or later. <laughs> possible, oh, two or three, there you go. There you go. If anybody has any questions. Nope. Awesome, thank you very okay. much. Thank you so much, Anna, and Christian.